Tripura is a small northeastern state that is enriched with the influences of various cultures. Tribals, non tribals reside here harmoniously. There are various tribal communities in Tripura. Out of these tribal communities, one community which has a very rich cultural heritage is the Mog community. The simple lifestyle of this community, their customs and traditions have always attracted the attention. Mogs are generally peace-loving and hospitable by nature. In Tripura, the Mog community resides in areas like Shabrum, Bilonia, Shantir Bajar, Chotok Hill, Dolbari, Devdaru, Julaibari, Pilak, Baikhara, Laugang, Beer Chandra Munu, Kolshi, Bagafa, Dhalai district and Kulai. The Mogs have been resident in Tripura since ages. According to 2001 census, the Mog population is 30,385, out of which 15,393 are males and 14,992 are females. In West Tripura district, the number of Mogs residing is 423, and of which 222 are males and 201 are females. In North Tripura district, the Mog population is 1,487, out of which 757 are males and females are 713. In South Tripura district, the total Mog population is 24,706, out of which 12,510 are males and 12,196 are females. In the Dholai district, the Mog population is 3,769, out of which 1,904 are males and 1,865 are females. In Rajmala, there is a reference of the Mogs that Since time immemorial, the Mogs that have been recognized during the rule of Amar Manikya Tripur lost to them. In Tripura Smriti, a book by late Samarendra Dev Burman, it has been mentioned that in Tripura, the Mo king, who was a Buddhist and belonged to the Lika community, ruled and his capital was Rangamati or the present Udaipur. The villages of the Mogs generally consist of 10 to 50 families made of bamboos and the houses have two rooms. The houses are raised from the ground level to protect the inmates from wild animals. The Mogs are very fond of eating. They mainly eat a prime which means boiled a kang, which means roasted, a phuk, which means burnt, a tho, which means godak, alho, which means fried, and lasu, which means mashed, which monks eat. Besides, they gather edibles from the tree and eat them. 
They like to take boiled foods which they take daily. They smoke from a bamboo hookah of about 18 cm or more. While eating rice, the mogs place a particular ingredient on it called the puizang made of bamboo. The language of the mogs is similar to Burmese although the language of the mogs is typically their own. In Tripura, the only school to instruct in the mog language is the Dimadipa school in Manubankul under the Rupai Chari block of Sharpdum. Dhamadipa school is the only school in Tripura run under CBS syllabus by mock community mostly. And most of the mock people are located in this vicinity under Rupai Churi Ardi block, Sabram Sao Tripura. So this Damadipa school, we have committed to provide both the secular education as well as preservation of mock culture and we teach here mock language also as I have told you. We the mock people have our own scripts similar to that of South Indian scripts like Tamil, Malayala, there is some similarities. But of course, the mock language or mock script have their own uh, distinguishing characteristics. So now we are also trying now to get the mock language approved by the government of Tripura, the state government. The Mog women wear a dress which is divided in two portions. The upper portion is the Angi and the lower portion is the Thoboing. Mog men wear Lungi and Rongji and on their heads wear turban called the Gong Bong. Mog women wear silver and gold ornaments. Their ornaments are Hoing Drunsi, a neck piece, Fia, rings, Thea, bangles, Lakok, Kakhyang, anklets, Nasain, earrings, Nabongdo, Khogro, chains made of poises, ornaments to wear on the waist, and use hair clips and pengu. The mogs are jhum cultivators. They, however, do the jhum cultivation on the ground rather than hills. The mogs say that it is they who introduced land cultivation in Tripura. The process in which the mogs cultivate is the forest areas are cleared. The trees are burnt after they have dried. After that, the land is tilled and seeds are sown. While sowing seeds, the women use a certain vessel called the kokhya in which they store the seeds and hang it from their waists. With a spade, the soil is upturned and seeds are sown. If rain starts while they are sowing seeds, then the area until where 
the seeds are sown is marked using a bamboo. Besides cultivation, mogs do hunting. The various methods of hunting adopted by them are Firstly, mogs pelt small mud balls at birds with their bows and hunt them. Secondly, the process used to hunt wild hens is called zangi. A trap made of rope is laid to catch wild hens. Thirdly, a trap is laid by digging holes. This method is used to hunt wild animals. A big hole is dug on which is put dried leaves, etc. And to attract wild animals, food is left on them. Attracted by the food, when the animals come and step on the leaves, they fall in the hole and are hunted. Fourthly, monks use bow and arrows to hunt birds and animals. The arrows are made of iron and bird feathers are attached at the rear side of the arrows to balance the arrows. Fifthly, another way to hunt animals is by placing very sharp bamboo pieces on various heights on trees in an area so that when wild animals pass through that area, the bamboo pieces pierce their bodies or hearts. This method is generally adopted to get rid of wild animals if they keep on visiting a particular area again and again and create terror. Bamboo is used in the mock community to prepare hats, makla, kokya, etc. To prepare the hats, the small strips of bamboo are woven to which a type of leaf called solu or oli is attached. The second layer is woven and it is attached to the first layer of the bamboo sleeves with the leaves in between. This hat protects from heat and rain during jhum cultivation. The leaves resist heat and raindrops. Nature plays a vital role in the lives of the mogs. The mogs depend on nature for medicines. The aro chi leaf is used to treat broken bones. The leaf or the bark of the patro chi is used to treat cuts and wounds. The leaves are pasted, applied on the injured area, tightly wrapped by a leaf, and a grache, a bamboo net is tied over the area to keep the body part in place. Mog women are industrious than men. They work on jhum, do household chores, fetch water from distant places, and even weave the handloom. The handloom cloth woven by the mog women is called komortant or raukain. The mog women weave intricate designs on handloom. The tools used to weave cloth are rama, kya, layak, roinsi. community, marriages are of three types. Firstly, the bridegroom's family give dowry to the bride's family and take away the bride. Secondly, the bridegroom comes to stay at the bride's home permanently post-marriage. Thirdly, the girl and boy elope and marry. Generally, a marriage is fixed by mutual talks between the two families. When the bride arrives at the groom's home, her way is abstracted using a bamboo pole and she is asked who is she and why she has come there. She has to answer the questions. This is a ritual called Kumbra Lukrang. After this, the newlywed bride comes and pays obeisance 
to the groom's parents. On the day of the marriage, money is given to the bride's family by the groom's family to uplift their spirits and a special noise is made while giving the money. During a marriage, the bride and the groom sit side by side wearing traditional attires. There is a plate placed before them on which, besides other things, there is a green coconut on which bamboo slits are placed. The bamboo slits are decorated with paper flowers, fruits, paper umbrella and betel nut leaf. During the marriage, the betel nut leaves are arranged according to the weekdays on which the bride and groom were born. The betel nut leaves are also placed below and above a water-filled container. If the day is Sunday, then the upper leaf is called Kaingo and the lower leaf is called Dona Theng Thang. If it is Monday, then it is Ji and Ung Ang. If it is Tuesday, then it is Rero and Kaingo. If it is Wednesday, then it is Proing and Ji. If it is Thursday, then it is Sengse and Long Loi. If it is Friday, then it is Thing and Popain. And if it is Saturday, then it is Ung or Ang and Sengse. At the initial part of the marriage, a Buddhist bhikshu chants the Mangal Sutra and the collected people accept the Panchashil. The second part of the marriage is conducted by a priest and it is called a kachra. During marriage rituals, the priest gives five advices to the bride and the groom called Dhananjoy Uptesh. The five advices given to the bride are Run the household smoothly, do not be attracted to other men, be generous and give alms and help, Pay attention to household course, be courteous to elders. The five advices given to the groom are keep your wife healthy and happy, do not be attracted to other women, teach your wife what is to be done, be religious in your dealings with your wife, the couple should lead a religious life. The bride's family is fed with binni rice and sugar or jaggery is given to them. During marriage rituals, the bride and the groom have to wear threads from a bamboo stick that is kept on a plate filled with koi, an eatable made of rice. After marriage rituals are over, the couple sprinkle flowers on the elders and seek blessings. In turn, the elders sprinkle koi on the couple and bless them. A special sound made orally indicates the end of marriage rituals.